they would pass through these major cities. Now, they, they passed through several cities as they were going to Damascus and they had guards protecting the head because they were afraid that people were going to come and attack them and take the head and bury it. So they did not want people to bury the head of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Historians mention that as soon as they left Kufa, they reached a city or a town, a village, and the guard that was carrying the head of Imam al Hussein, he placed the head down and he went to talk, to socialize with the other guards. They were standing next to a wall and suddenly they saw being written on the wall, Atarju ummatan qatalat Husaynan shafa'ata jaddihi yawm al wurudi. Does a nation, does a group of people that killed Hussein expect the shafa'ah of his grandfather on the Day of Judgment? Who expects the shafa'ah of Rasulullah on the Day of Judgment when they killed and they were satisfied with the murder of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam? And this is mentioned in a Shia source and in a Sunni source. Ibn Hajar, Ibn Hajar in his book, as al Muhraqa, he writes this. He writes that they had the head next to them and they saw being written on the wall, Atarju ummatan qatalat Husaynan shafa'ata jaddihi yawm al wurudi. And others, they add that they saw other and they heard other sounds, other noise. They saw other things being written. One thing that they saw written was this line of poetry. لا بد أن ترد القيامة فاطم وقميصها بدم الحسين ملطخ ويل لمن شفعاؤه خصماؤه والصور في يوم القيامة ينفخ The poem says that there is going to be a day where Fatima, she comes on the day of judgment. She comes on the day of judgment and she's carrying the shirt that is stained with blood, the shirt of her son, Imam al Hussein. And then the poem continues it says, Wailun liman shufa'a'uhu khusama'uhu. Woe be upon the one who the ones who are, they're supposed to intercede for this person. They are the ones who are holding this person accountable. They are the ones who are complaining to Allah regarding this person. And that day of judgment was the day that there is going to be a blow. The, the trumpet will be blown and that is when everyone will take their account. <coughs> this is one event. Of course, historians mention that there were many miraculous signs that were seen with the head of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. They would hear the head of Imam al Hussein reciting Quran. The head of Imam al Hussein would be reciting Quran. People would see many signs from the head of Imam al Hussein. And this is nothing strange. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we Muslims believe that there was a sign with the head of Yahya, Prophet Yahya, John the Baptist who was murdered and he was beheaded just like Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took vengeance and took revenge from those who killed Yahya, John the Baptist. Similarly, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Imam al Hussein is no less than Yahya. Imam al Hussein is the grandson of Rasulullah. He's an Imam. He's the son of an Imam. He's a, his mother is Ma'soom. His father is Ma'soom. His grandfather is Ma'soom. His brother is Ma'soom. His children are the Imams. Imam al Hussein is no less than Yahya and any other prophet. So they would see, they would hear the head of Imam al Hussein reciting Quran. They would see signs from the head of Imam al Hussein. Another stop that the caravan stopped in was in Tikrit, the city of Tikrit in Iraq. And northern Iraq and Turkey at that time, many of these cities, they were Christian cities. There were Christians that were living in these cities. But you see historians mention that even the Christians, they were upset with Bani Umayyah with what they did with Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. The Christians, they would object to Yazid and Bani Umayyah for what they did to the grandson of Rasulullah, the Prophet of Islam. They go into, they were, they were planning on entering Tikrit. So they send a message to the governor over there. They tell him, come and welcome us. 
So people, they come out and they see there's a head being raised. So people, they begin to ask, whose head is this? They tell them, this is the head of the Khariji. One of the Khawarij, al Hussein, the son of Fatima, the, son of, the daughter of Rasulullah. People, they say, you killed. The Christians, they would say, you killed the grandson of your own prophet. If we had anyone that was related to Jesus amongst us today, we would honor him. We would bless him. And this is how you treat the grandson of your own prophet? Go away from here and we will not allow you to enter into our city. Historians mention that many times the caravan, they would try to enter into the cities and the people, they would stop them. They would not allow them to enter into the city. In another place, this is referred to as Mashhad al nuqta the place of the drop of blood. They say that the head of Imam al Hussein, a drop of blood fell from the head of Imam al Hussein in this, in this location. And there's a maqam, and this is why in Iraq and in parts of Syria, parts of Turkey right now, there is maqam for the head of Imam al Hussein. Why is there maqam for the head of Imam al Hussein all over the Muslim world? Because this is where they would place the head of Imam al Hussein. In this place, it's referred to as Mashhad al Nuqta. Because they, a drop of blood fell from the head of Imam al Hussein, and every, every time they tried to cover that drop of blood, they would see that the blood would come up once again. They would never be able to cover it. It would boil, just like the blood of Yahya, John the Baptist. They couldn't cover it. It was on a piece of rock until they couldn't remove it until the time of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, the Khalifa Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. He came and he removed that rock and destroyed it and he hid the rock. And after that they built, they built a maqam, Mashhad al-Nuqta, where the head of Imam al-Hussein was placed. In another place, Musul, they entered into Musul, they tried to enter into Musul and the people, once they found out that this is the head of Imam al-Hussein, they rejected and they did not allow them. Another city by the name of Nas'ibin, Ayn al-Warda, Al-Riqqa, Al-Jawsaq, Da'wat, Halab. These were all cities where the head of Imam al-Hussein was passed through and the family of Imam al-Hussein was passed through. In one place by the name of Qansarin, they go and there is a monastery, there is a chapel. They go and they rest the head of Imam al-Hussein and next to the place where they rest the head of Imam al-Hussein, there is a monk. There's a person who's worshiping. There's a person who is praying in his chapel, in his monastery. So he hears a weird, he hears the sound, something that captures his attention. In the middle of the night, he hears a voice saying, Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. Peace be upon you, O Aba Abdullah. So he comes out, he tells, the, he looks at this, he sees a head and many other heads. But the head of Imam al Hussein has captured his attention. So he tells them, What is this? Whose head is this? They tell him, This is the head of Hussein, the son of Fatima, the daughter of Rasulullah. He tells them, He tells them, I am not surprised why it began to rain blood a few days ago. You have murdered, you have murdered the grandson of your daughter, of, of your prophet. I'm not surprised that it rained blood. And historians mention, Sunni historians, Shia historians, and even you could find this in academic sources. Trace it back to the day of Ashura. You will find that it rained blood all over the world. All over the world it rained blood. There's a chronicle in England. In England that is traced back to the year that Imam al Hussein was killed. They mention some of the most important events that took place in that year. They say that they would see the butter and the milk, it would turn into, it turned into blood that year. This is written in, in England, traced back to that year. It's, it's placed in an encyclopedia. Ibn Hajar, a Sunni scholar, he says, even in Bayt al-Maqdis in Jerusalem, every rock that was lifted, they would see blood be boiling under it. Because the skies cried blood, the earth cried for Imam al Hussein. So that monk, he tells them, I'm not surprised that it rained blood because you killed and you murdered the grandson of your own prophet. So then he asks them, he tells them, can I kiss the head? Can I kiss this noble head? They tell him no. So he goes and he takes money and he gives them money. 
He tells them, I will give you money. Let me borrow this head for one night. Let me keep the head with me for the night. So they take the money and he takes the head of Imam al Hussein with him. He goes, he begins to wash the head of Imam al Hussein. And then he plays, he doesn't know who this person is. He's, a, he's not even a Muslim. He comes and he, he places the head of Imam al Hussein in front of him. He tells him, Man ant, who are you? And then he hears the head begin to speak to him. The head begins to tell him, Anabn Muhammad al Mustafa, Anabn Ali al Murtada, Anabn Fatima al Zahra, An al Maktul bi Karbala, An al Mazlum, An al Atshan. I am the one who was murdered in Karbala. I am the oppressed. I am the thirsty. I am the son of Muhammad al Mustafa. I am the son of Ali al Murtada. I am the son of Fatima al Zahra. So the monk, he tells the head, he tells him, how can I receive your shafa'ah? How can I receive your intercession on the day of judgment? So the, he sa the head tells him, enter into the religion of my grandfather. So the man, he joins the religion of Islam and he comes back, he brings the head back to the soldiers the next day. And this is a documented story in Sunni traditions and in Shia traditions. Then they kept going on their journey, on their way to Damascus. They passed Kafar Talib, Saibur, Hama, Hems, Baalbek, and finally they arrived into Damascus. Oh, my God.